Blessed is our God, Trinity of love, and blessed is the dominion of our God, now and ever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Uh, welcome, everyone. Good to see you all here. Coming on in. Thank you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We claim this time for the worship of God. May God gather us from the four corners of the earth, uniting us as one body in Christ as we lift our voices in praise. Seek the ways of wisdom. He who comes when earth was new, follow closely what she teaches, for her words are right and true. Wisdom clears the path to justice, showing us what love must be. Listen to the voice of wisdom crying in the marketplace. Hear the word made flesh among us, full of glory, truth, and grace. When the word takes root and ripens, peace and righteousness. Sister Wisdom, come and see us, nurture all who seek rebirth, spirit guide and close companion, bring to light our sacred blood, free us to become your people, holy Jesus Christ is the light of the world. A light no darkness can extinguish. Since we live as people of the light in faith, faith, hope, and love, let us the Lord. Into your communion, Lord, gather all creation. Joining our voices with the deep groans of creation and with the cries of lament that rise from a world in travail, aching for redemption, let us pray to the Lord. Into your communion, Lord, gather all creation. With the traditional custodians of this land, the Bun Wurrung and Wurundjeri peoples, and with all whose blood cries out from the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Into your communion, Lord, gather all creation. Sabe yo ek pukriya ko sansar ko gau haru sahana ra niku huna ra ayakara huna chancha prabhu le prathana garam. Into your communion, Lord, gather all creation. With all who suffer with Christ under the weight of the sin of the world, those subjected to injustice and deprivation, those seeking refuge, freedom and peace, and especially at this time, for the people of the Darfur region, as they continue to die in their thousands from fighting or famine. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Into your communion, Lord, gather all creation. With the world's children, with the aged and infirm, with all who are unable to protect themselves from danger and know their need of others, let us pray to the Lord. Into your communion, Lord, gather all creation. With all who serve the earth and its inhabitants, with leaders, policymakers, activists, with workers, students, artists and storytellers, and especially this week with John Fowler and his work with the midweek worship service and the pastoral care that he gives to those who attend. Let us pray to the Lord. Into your communion, Lord, gather all creation. With each one gathered here in prayer, with our absent friends, with our neighbours at the Anglican parish of St. John the Evangelist in Turak, and with the whole of Christ's church, from the banks of the Birarang to the ends of the, the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Into your communion, Lord, gather all creation. with God's faithful servants of every time and place, all our mothers and fathers among the saints who inspire us, guide us and encourage us. And especially this week with those who taught us to unite the quest for justice with the life of prayer. With Francis and Claire of Assisi, Evelyn Underhill, Thomas Merton, Dorothy Day, and Mum Shirl Smith. Let us pray to the Lord. Into your communion, Lord, gather all creation. And with the faithful ones whose names we call on now. With these and the whole cloud of witnesses, all who have died in the hope of resurrection, let us pray to the Lord. Into your communion, Lord, gather all creation. Blessed are you, God of all creation, and blessed is the communion into which you gather us. You promised through your beloved Son that when two or three gather together in his name, you will be there in the midst of them. Send your Holy Spirit to call us by name and lead us home. We come defeated. We come dancing. We come traumatised. We come trusting. We come aggrieved, we come adoring. Send your Holy Spirit to call us by name and lead us home. 我们来是因为我们的心变得不安，因耳中那位曾听闻的歌曲，因脑中那位曾见过的地方。Send your Holy Spirit to call us by name and lead us home. The Lord says, If you would enter the gates of my holy city and eat from the tree of life, turn away from evil, and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. For those who sow injustice reap disaster, but the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, and peace. 
O God, you have searched us and you know us. All that we are is open to you. We confess that we are entangled in sin. In your mercy, heal us and set us free. When we use our power to dominate and our, and our weakness to manipulate. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. When we evade responsibility and fail to confront evil. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. When we are seduced by fashionable dreams, and pursue our desires at the expense of others. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. When we not think that we should change the world and even forget to change ourselves. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. When we fail to integrate spirit and flesh and forfeit the wholeness you intend for us. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. We turn to you, O God of infinite mercy. We renounce evil, we claim your love, we choose to be made whole. The Lord is gracious and merciful and comes to redeem us. Christ Jesus offers himself to us, forgiving our sins and promising to raise us to life on the last day. To each and every one of you, I declare, your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. You be not a day, you be not a day, you Chilakasifu,他叫我们能与众圣徒在光明中同得基业,就我们脱离黑暗,带我们进入他爱子的国里,我们能得蒙救赎,罪过得以赦免。Spirit in the 
Beloved in Christ, we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Therefore, let us have wisdom. Let us take heed. Let us not flee the word that comes to save us. Lord, to whom shall we go? Yours are the words of eternal life. O Lord, your mysteries discerned in wisdom by prayerful people through the centuries have been etched in sacred places and recorded in holy books. Send your Holy Spirit upon us that your word may take root in the secret places of our hearts and may our truth to your glory. A reading from the first book of Kings. Let us listen for the word of God. King David died and was buried in Jerusalem. He'd ruled over Israel for 40 years, seven years from Hebron and then 33 from Jerusalem. David's son Solomon inherited the throne and he had a firm grip on the kingdom. Solomon honoured the Lord and lived as his father David had taught him. In addition, he offered sacrifices and burnt incense at some of the sacred sites in the hills. The most important of these sacred sites was at Gibeon and Solomon offered more than a thousand sacrifices on the altar there. One night, while he was staying over in Gibeon, the Lord God appeared to Solomon in a dream. God said to him, Solomon, what would you most like me to give you? Solomon answered God, saying, You always loved my father, your servant David. Your love was solid and unshakable because he was good and honest and did what was right by you. As a sign of your love and loyalty to him, you gave him a son to inherit his kingdom. So here I am, Lord God, I am your servant and you have made me king in the place of my father, even though I'm little more than a boy and have no idea how to conduct myself properly. I am your servant, and you have given me the job of ruling your chosen people, even though they are a great nation, and there are more of them than anyone can count. So then, what I would like, what I would most like you to give me is a sharp mind, and to rule justly, and to be able to pick the difference between right and wrong every time. Without such a gift, no one could ever hope to rule your people. The Lord was most impressed with Solomon's request, and said to him, You could have selfishly asked me to give you a long life, or to make you the richest man on earth, or to wipe out your enemies. But instead you have asked me for the wisdom to make the right decisions for my people. You have chosen well, and I will give you exactly what you have asked for. You will have more wisdom and insight than anyone else who has ever lived or ever will. And to top it all off, I will also give you what you could have asked for but didn't. All your life you will be extraordinarily rich, and you will be greatly honoured by everyone. No other king will be able to hold a candle to you. And if you do things my way and play by the rules I have given you, much as your father did, then I will give you a long and healthy life. Hear the word of God. We have heard the silent.
for the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be exalted, O God, above the homes, let your glory over all the earth be found. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, let your glory over all the earth be found. With my whole heart, I praise the Lord among the just. Great are God's works, a delight to explore. In splendor, in majesty, God's justice will stand. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory over all the earth be found. Who can forget God's wonders? A God merciful and kind, who nourished the faithful, upheld the covenant, and revealed mighty deeds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, let your glory over all the earth be found. Faithful, just, and true are all God's decrees, each law in its place, valid forever. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, let your glory over all the earth be found. The Lord redeems the faithful, decrees a lasting covenant, holy and awesome God's name. Fear of the Lord is wisdom's crown. Wise are those who live by it. Praise the Lord forever. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory over all the earth be found. A reading from the letter to the Christians in Ephesus. Let us listen for the word of God. When it comes to the way you live, watch your step. Don't go acting without thinking. Use your heads and live wisely. Make the most of your time because these days evil never stops trying to seduce us. So don't be naive and stupid. See to it that you get the will of the Lord clear in your heads. And if you're going to go getting yourselves under the influence, make sure it's the influence of the spirit and not of the wine. It will still get you singing. Sing together often psalms, hymns and spiritual songs. Offer them as a toe-tapping gift to the Lord. And when you're not together, do the same thing in your hearts. As children filled with gratitude and wonder, give thanks to God all the time and for everything. Mention the name of our Lord Jesus Christ when you do as a reminder of where our gratitude comes from. Hear the word of God. We have heard the For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us acclaim God's saving justice, attested by the law and the prophets, and now revealed through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. Listen now for the gospel, alleluia. It is God's word that changes us, alleluia. With hearts filled with the Holy Spirit, let us sing and give thanks to the Lord our God in everything. Listen now for the gospel, alleluia. It is God's word that changes us, alleluia. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the living bread straight from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live life without end and without limit. The bread that I'm offering is my own flesh and I give it for the life of the world. This got the people all worked up and they began arguing among themselves saying, what is this bloke talking about? He can't serve a meal of his own flesh, can he? Hearing this, Jesus said to them, Let me set you straight on this. Unless you swallow the new human, consume him flesh and blood, you'll be lifeless. Those who do consume me are nourished by my flesh and blood and have life without limit. I'll be there for them on the last day, raising them to new life. You see, my flesh and blood are the real stuff, true food and drink. What you eat and drink becomes a part of you, but when you consume my flesh and blood, not only will I become a part of you, but you'll find yourself in me becoming a part of me. The God who conceived me is the source of my life and has sent me, serving me up to you. In much the same way, I will be the source of life for whoever digests me. Do you see then? This is the real bread which has come from heaven. It's not like what your ancestors ate in the desert. They still died. This is different. Those who eat this bread will live life without end and without limit. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you for the gospel, alleluia. It is God's word that changes us, alleluia. Praise to you for the gospel, alleluia. It is God's word that changes us, alleluia. Lest the word of life be lost, let us allow God to confront us in the sound of she silence. Spirit of comfort and conviction, unclose me of my pride, unweave my thoughts, uncomplicate my heart, and give me surrender, that I may welcome the deep silence which stands at the centre of my being, like the rock at the heart of our land.
Until Thursday morning, I was planning to revise and re-preach an old sermon that dealt with the fascinatingly gruesome cannibalistic imagery that Jesus employed in the gospel reading tonight when he talks about our need to eat his flesh and drink his blood if we are to have eternal life. It's so bizarre and confronting that it's hard to hear it in our worship service without talking about it. Um, so now that I'm not going to talk about it, I will provide a link to that previous sermon in the online version of this one so that you can go and read it if you need to grapple with what on earth that was all about. What I do want to preach on tonight will not be nearly as weird or confronting, but it's something I don't think I've ever preached on before, and I hope it will still be helpful. I want to preach about singing together in worship. Our reading from the letter to the Ephesians exhorted us to be filled with the Holy Spirit as we sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among ourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in our hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all time and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So on Thursday morning, I read a little piece in the media about the kinds of music that are played to you when you are stuck on hold waiting for someone to take your phone call. And that sparked off a hundred thoughts about the ways that music is used and abused and about what that might mean for the way that we sing together in worship. And of course, for us in this congregation, that is changed again by the fact that we now gather to worship online. Singing is a very physical thing, but we are no longer physically together as we seek to sing together. I'll come back to that. There's probably no one who is completely immune to the power of music to evoke our memories and impact our emotions. Even people who are deaf can often feel music in their bodies and be moved by it. And this article that I read suggested that companies can and do make choices about their on-hold music in order, order to either increase the likelihood of people waiting patiently or deter them from waiting and make them want to hang up. Hello, Centrelink, Telstra and insurance company claim lines. There are really obvious things like choosing music that is calming and pleasant versus music that is annoying and agitating. But there is also things like having music that goes on continuously without beginning or end so that people on hold can't start thinking, I've been here for six songs already. The article went on to comment on how a restaurant might play more upbeat music to prevent people from relaxing too much and to keep them moving to make way for the next sitting. Or a supermarket might use music that encourages people to linger and end up buying more. And public toilets might use insidiously repetitive music that would make it unbearable for a homeless person to consider locking themselves in and sleeping there for the night. Now, none of that is about us singing together, but it does shine a little light on the ways that music can affect our emotions and behaviours. The article acknowledged that this manipulative intent is far from an exact science because everyone's music tastes are different. So what soothes one person may annoy others. I've also heard it said that the music that most appeals to people and has an instant impact on their feelings is the music they were into when they were 17. There have even been studies on the therapeutic power of music with people in advanced states of dementia. And it seems to be the music that they most loved in their late teens that most reopens temporary bridges of coherent conversation which is an important reminder that these people have not lost their mind, as is too often said. They are still all there, but the bridges of communication and connection have become harder to find. Lots of aged care chaplains report on how particular classic hymns, Amazing Grace being the most often cited, can awaken a room full of people who previously seemed distant and lost in their own inner worlds. 
music therapy has become a whole specialist branch of healthcare, not only in dementia care and palliative care, but in all sorts of healthcare. When it comes to singing together with others, there are quite a few of us in this congregation who are quite passionately involved in it. Ian sings in the chorus of major opera productions and in the Essendon Choral Society. Acacia's live theatre work includes a particular passion for musical theatre. James is married to a prominent choir director in the Melbourne gospel music scene. Samara, Shelley, Margie and Glenis all sing in community choirs. I don't think John does anymore, but he did. And there's sure to be a few of you that I've missed. A brief online search would find you any amount of social science analysis of the powerful benefits of singing together in choirs. It has measurable impacts on both physical and mental well-being. And it's that sense of euphoric well-being on top of the fact that it's just good fun that keeps people coming back to these choirs. Singing together in churches has always been part of this same phenomenon. Apart from any spiritual benefits, churches have been places that have launched many great musical careers. It's no accident that many of the world's greatest and most loved singers first learned to sing growing up in churches. But singing together is not just about sounding good and feeling good. And as we edge closer to the specific question of the role of singing together in worship, it's worth noting how singing can bind us together in a strong sense of unity and group identity. If you watched much of the Olympic Games, you'll have noticed the significance of singing national anthems during the medal ceremonies. Most Australians are not even big fans of our national anthem, but we still get caught up in the emotion of it as Jess Fox or Ariane Titmus get yet another gold medal draped around their necks and we all feel joyously united as proud Aussies. The singing helps bind us together. You might have also observed how important singing the club song is in footy club culture. It's seldom the height of musicality, except in some of the Pacific Islander rugby clubs, but it's an important ritual that binds the team together in a powerful sense of common identity and common purpose. This sense of common identity and common purpose is hugely significant in more important contexts too. The community singing of South African freedom songs helped bring down apartheid. It was important in the freedom struggle in Timor-Leste too, and Shelley has been sharing some clips of our friends there singing for us recently. Without the singing of Palestinian freedom songs, the Palestinian people may well have been obliterated by the brutal oppression that they have endured for decades. Listen to the choirs of any of the many Burmese churches in our Baptist Union, and you'll understand a little more of how they survived as strong communities amidst the horrors that have been perpetrated against them and their home country. Oppressive regimes around the world have often moved swiftly to lock up or eliminate the poets and folk singers because they recognize the crucial role they play in keeping hope alive and resistance strong. All of these things inform and contribute to what is going on when we gather to sing together in church. When we gather to, in the words of our reading, sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among ourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in our hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. A few preachers and biblical scholars have tried to make distinctions between these three things, psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Most, though, have concluded that there's really nothing in that idea. The writer to the Ephesians has quite the habit of piling up synonyms. Why use one word when you can use three? And these exact three words occur frequently and interchangeably in the titles in the Greek version of the book of Psalms that was in use in the first century. 
An almost identical verse can be found in the letter to the Colossians, where it says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teach and admonish one another in all wisdom and with gratitude in your hearts, singing psalms, hymns and spiritual songs to God. So that one reminds us that singing together is linked to teaching one another. And there's no doubt that singing helps embed words and ideas into our minds. Those of you who are around back when we first switched from speaking the Lord's Prayer and the Apostles' Creed in unison to singing them together will probably remember that many of us went from needing to read the words to knowing them by heart in just a few weeks. Some of you will remember our Muslim friend, Noor, who was a Hafiz, which means that he had memorized the entire Quran. Now, it doesn't make it any less extraordinary, but Noor would be the first to admit that every Hafiz does that by learning to sing it, not speak it. And many of you know the experience of hearing a song that you haven't heard for decades and finding that you still know all the words. Malady creates the hooks that embed the words in our minds. The early Baptists 400 years ago were very aware of this, and initially they were opposed to singing anything other than psalms and biblical texts because they wanted nothing but scripture to have that power in their minds. That hardline attitude gave way within the first generation, and the Baptists were soon up there with the Methodists as the most enthusiastic adopters of hymn singing and hymn writing. Now, of course, this power to embed words and ideas in our minds means that it is important to pay attention to the quality of the lyrics. This can be an issue, particularly in the modern praise songs of the neo-Pentecostal or contemporary praise and worship churches, because in their liturgies, music serves a different function. It's more sacramental than instructional. That is, it functions to facilitate an emotional and spiritual experience of the presence of God. And that sacramental function means that it is the sound and feel of the songs and their ability to influence our feelings and experience that is more important than the words. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's a perfectly good and valid thing. But it does sometimes mean that the songwriters give insufficient attention to the quality of the words. And that matters because even if the words are not the primary focus, they are still being embedded in our hearts and minds. And that's a bad thing if they are conveying bad images of God. For example, there is a worship song that has been hugely popular in the last 15 years called Come, Now is the Time to Worship. It's a great piece of music and very enjoyable to sing in a big crowd. I love it. But it also explicitly teaches that the biggest rewards in heaven are kept for those who come to Jesus first. And that's a flat out contradiction of what Jesus himself said in his parable of the workers in the vineyard. But I've got no idea how many times I'd sung that song before I even noticed what it was saying and what it was impressing on my mind. So if you've wondered why we never sing it here, that's why. I hope you're not hearing that as a criticism of the style, though, because it's not. And it's not a criticism of choosing music for its emotional and social impact on us. That's always a factor in music, and it's only a problem if it's exploited to manipulate people unfairly or not recognised and understood and so is working randomly and chaotically. Feeling good is almost always one of the benefits of singing together. Feeling good, feeling united, feeling affirmed in our common faith, feeling strengthened in our group identity, feeling strengthened in our common purpose, our shared mission. These are all good things that singing together contributes to. And these things really matter amidst the challenges of living faithfully and courageously in a hostile and divisive world. The gospel is all about these things. It is all about breaking down the walls that divide us and uniting the whole world as one beloved people in Christ. 
And as a simple tool, there are few things more effective in making people feel united and at peace with one another than singing together. Combine that power with good lyrics that proclaim a thrilling vision of God's love reconciling us all in a world made new, and it's no wonder that the followers of Jesus have been singing together ever since he first walked among us. As our reading from Ephesians frames it, it is a basic expression of being filled with God's spirit. And it is a normal means of collectively giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. But before I finish, I can't neglect the elephant in the room. Does any of this still work for us when all our liturgies are online and we're not physically gathered in a resonant room where we can blend our voices and feel the full energy of that. I'm not going to pretend that nothing has changed and nothing has been lost. To put it bluntly, we are now singing along to recordings and that can never perfectly replicate the experience of full gathered congregational song. But it's not 100% lost either. I've heard visitors to our worship service say that they are surprised by how much more real our singing feels than what they have experienced in online worship elsewhere, and they're often confused as to why. It's actually not that hard to explain, though. It's because the recordings are actually of us, and we are all singing along in real time. We're not singing along to recordings made by professional musicians or choirs. And actually, in some physically gathered churches, the music has become so professionalised that most people are doing little more than quietly singing along with something that has been take, totally taken over by the band or the choir anyway. Even our present experience may be more authentic than that. Because what we are here, because what we're hearing is actually us, it sounds more real and feels more real, especially if you turn it up loud enough so that you can sing with full gusto and blend in with the other voices that you're hearing. It won't work nearly so well if you've got the volume low and you just peep along. There have been studies that have shown that when people are singing together, their heartbeats begin to synchronise with one another. And because that's attributed to the structure of the music rather than the physical proximity, it's entirely possible that the same thing still happens when we sing together in this way online. If you get fully into it, the singing itself may be physically connecting us. If you love singing and you want to take it a step further than that, you could put your hand up to become one of the people who contributes their voices to those recordings. Just contact me and I will let you know how. It's not hard. I will be the first to admit that singing together this way can never be as good an experience as being in a community choir or in a physically gathered singing congregation. But as we have discussed before, there are lots of things we'd lose and people we'd lose if we went back to physically gathered worship. And that's life. You can never have everything and choices need to be made. And by all means, go and join a community choir too. <laughs> it doesn't have to be just one or the other. Be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have heard the gospel proclaimed. To be able now to live it, we look to Jesus who says, All things are possible for those who believe. We believe, Lord, Lord help our unbelief. As we declare the common faith of the church, let us sing our way onward into the life of Jesus, the life that lives and loves between the lines. 
We believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen, amen. Restons fermement attachés à la foi que nous professons, puisque nous avons un souverain grand prêtre qui a traversé le ciel, Jésus, le Fils de Dieu. Let us pray for all God's people everywhere and for ourselves in this congregation, that the Holy Spirit may continue to open our hearts and lives to the grace and truth we find in Jesus our Lord. Que podamos permanecer en la fe y comunión de la única Iglesia Santa, Católica y Apostólica. That we may follow Jesus in the way of life, trusting God's strength in our own weakness and showing generosity and selfless care to all. Let us pray for the world and all peoples everywhere, that the world might be healed of its grievous wounds, that wars would cease, poverty, corruption and bigotry be eradicated, and fear, disease and despair be overcome. That the vulnerable and undeveloped nations might receive the aid and expertise they need to survive both old dangers and new, and emerge strong, healthy, and free. That the powerful and corrupt would be prevented from exploiting the world's current distractions to ransack the earth and prey upon the weak and forgotten. That those whose families and communities have been torn apart by acts of war, whether legal or criminal, might find justice, peace, and healing. That our political leaders might have wisdom, courage, and compassion to see beyond mere economic management and build the infrastructure that will properly house, feed, and care for all. That we might honour the First Nations of this land, seeking justice and reconciliation together, and taking to heart their wisdom for how to live in this land with respect and sensitivity.
that the most vulnerable in our society, including those without secure housing or work, those suffering illness, trauma or disability, and those seeking asylum on our shores, might be given welcome, support and hope. That all whom we carry in our hearts, from around our world, around our nation, and among our loved ones, might be gathered into our prayers, let us lift up to God the names of those for whom we would especially seek God's care. que podamos aprender a orar de la manera en que nuestro Salvador lo ha hecho. Por lo mismo, recemos como Él nos lo ha enseñado. We stand at the threshold of the ultimate feast when all who hunger will be fed and the new wine of justice will be poured. As it is so, Christ the colors come in table to shop the first fruits, make our bell full for the worker with them. Whosoever will may come, not because you are worthy, nor because any church gives permission but simply because Jesus offers himself to you and you want to offer yourself in return. Come, let us prepare the Lord's table, offering the gifts that we are and the gifts that we bring. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have communion with one another. And with all who hope in Christ. Though we are a company of strangers, in approaching this table, we bind ourselves to one another to live in love and peace on this day forth. Have peace with one another. The peace of the Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Recording stopped. Recording in progress. 亲爱的神,全世界的缔造者,生命之水的河流从你流出,因你的恩惠我们才能分享这酒。植物的果实和人的劳动成果 It will become for us our spiritual drink. We are the body of Christ. His spirit is with us. Let us lift up our heart. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
it is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right to give you our thanks and praise, O God, in the company of those who live with integrity. For you have given yourself to us as flesh and blood and become the bread that nourishes us for eternal life. Your righteousness was established before time began and all you have created reflects your honour and majesty. You made a covenant with your people and gave yourself generously to all who seek your wisdom and walk in your ways. In your great and steadfast love, you have come to redeem your people, offering us life in your Son, Jesus. Though his blood was poured out and his flesh sent to the grave, you raised him up to new life, and now he offers himself to us as the bread of heaven, so that all who eat and drink of him might live forever as one with him. Therefore, with the whole realm of nature around us, with earth, sea and sky, we sing to you. With the angels and archangels who envelop us, with all the saints before us and beside us, with the faithful in every place, east and west, north and south, we sing to you. And with our loved ones, we far from us, who stay in this mystery dangerous. We sing the hymn of an ending grace. Holy, 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 holy. Blessed are you, O God, who sets the table of creation, invites us to feast with you in a cosmic celebration of love and desire. We thank you for Jesus, whose life, prayer, ministry opened our eyes to the glory of life and fueled our hunger for your long anticipated reign of justice, mercy, and peace. We thank you for Christ's passionate solidarity with the suffering of all the earth, for as he bore in his own body the wounds of creation, he embraced us in our brokenness and gathered us into his wholeness so that we might know ourselves beloved and serve with him as priests forever in an all-embracing Eucharist. Blessed is our brother Jesus, bone of our bone and flesh of our flesh, who on the night when he was betrayed to bread, gave thanks, broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this to remember me. In the same way also the cup, after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it to remember me. Alors, toutes les fois que nous mangeons ce pain et buvons cette coupe, nous annonçons le mystère de notre foi. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Therefore, here in this place, we celebrate the life that death could not hold, the life that Jesus has shared among his community through the centuries and shares with us now. Habiendo sido hechos uno con él, y por tanto entre nosotros mismos, ponemos ante su presencia estos regalos de pan y vino, como señal de nuestro sacrificio, de alabanza y de agradecimiento, 
pues aquí nos presentamos a nosotros mismos, así como nuestros cuerpos, mente y espíritu, para constituir un sacrificio continuo y santo para ti, Señor. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come and brood over these bodily things, this bread and this wine. May they be for us the body and blood of Christ, healing, renewing, and making us whole. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come and embrace us with your life-giving power, that as bread and wine are made one with us, we may become one with you, bone of your bone, flesh of your flesh. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come and make of your gathered people the real presence of Christ for the world, living our prayer and praying our life till earth and heaven are reconciled and all are free as Christ is free. Glory be to you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God and Father of all creation, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. the body of Christ, given for the life of the world. Holy things for holy people. Holy One is holy. Let us receive what we are. Let us become what we receive. The, the body, body of Christ. Christ. Jesus, the wellspring of life, invites all who are thirsty to come to him. So come, receive freely. Let us raise our cups as one and taste the first fruits of the coming joy. The blood of Christ keep you in eternal life until, until he comes. comes.
Lord God, in baptism you united us with Christ and welcomed us into your church. In bread and wine you offer yourself as food for the journey and grace for the road. Por lo mismo salimos de este lugar como parte de tu pueblo, siguiendo a Cristo en una vida común de compromiso fiel a tu llamado. Knowing our own weakness, but trusting in the power of the Holy Spirit, let us offer up the prayer we now go to live. God of the journey, you have called us together to walk in all your ways as a community of love and grace. Grant us the grace. We are called into communion with God and one another. Though now we part, gather us again into your communion to worship, work and play. We are called to offer ourselves to God and one another. Employing you in healing decisions, welcoming all and shouldering my share of the load. We are called to attend to the voice of God Open me to your word, in scripture, in silence, in stranger and friend. We are called to extend God's hospitality from our table. Fill our eating and drinking with generosity, that we may bring joy to the lonely and hungry. We are called to non-conformity with the world's ways. Strengthen me to face the darkness within myself and to resist all greed, violence, and desecration. Send me into the world you love, proclaiming and sharing your mercy and peace. We are called to nurture faith and growth. In me and through me, nourish the seeds of grace, and bring forth fruits of justice, and tune me to the voice of despair, like I said, be dancing to the song of hope. We are called to live thankfully. Cultivating me a heart of gratitude, looking for your blessings in all things, and seeking to be a blessing to all. This is our covenant, the prayer we would live and the life we would pray. Yet, Yet only by your grace can we do anything, God, and you alone can hold us when we cannot hold ourselves. To you, glorious and blessed God, creator, redeemer and sustainer, be the glory and praise forever. Amen. The Lord says, walk in my sight and behold. Make it your first work to love. My presence shall go with you, and I will give you rest. Behold, I am with you every moment, even to the end of the world. <clears throat> go out, nourished by the bread of heaven, and take care to walk in the ways of wisdom. Discern carefully between right and wrong. Understand what the will of the Lord is. Feed on Christ and be filled with the Spirit. And may God give you a wise and discerning mind. May Christ Jesus fill you with the life in all of its fullness. And may the Holy Spirit overflow in you in songs of joy and praise forever. Friends, the Eucharist never ends. It must be lived. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.